good test. All right, how's it going, folks? Sentry Gun here, and what we are looking at today is a pair of headphones I have purchased from Mastrop, but essentially identical to another classic set that has been around for a long, long time. These are the AKG, where are we? AKG M220s. They were a Mastrop special. They run quite frequently on Mastrop, actually. And I picked them up for the grand price of the headphones themselves were $49.99 for Mastrop, 50 bucks, which is pretty good. What these are is the Mastrop equivalent of a, another classic set of headphones, the K240s by AKG. Uh, the K240s themselves typically retail around, I'm talking Amazon here, retail, not necessarily bricks and mortar store, but $62.99 I'm looking at, there's some two used from $61.99, so obviously they are, you know, that's about the price they hover at. They do go up and down a little bit, but what I would thought I'd do is give these things a review. Um, not going to do the full-blown unboxing today, as I've had these out of the box for quite some time. I've been taking them around with me and listening to them everywhere. I've road tested the shit out of these things, basically. What we'll do is I'll pick up the box anyway and we'll go over some of the specs from these headphones. Here is our box. Drink it in. Well presented. Anyway, they are a 55 ohm set of headphones. They're fairly lightweight. 240 grams without the cable so they are pretty light and they are quite comfortable as well like you don't really feel them on your head i've worn these things for extended sessions for a long time over the last couple of weeks and at no point have they become uncomfortable enough that i would want to take them off and say ah oh, these things are shitting me i've got to get rid of them which is nice um max input power 200 milliwatts they use a fairly small driver it is a they call it the patented very motion 30 millimeter XXL transducer. There's a lot of marketing speak in there, makes it sound a shitload bigger than it is, but is a 30 millimeter driver with a neodymium, neodymium, powerful magnet. Anyway, but they sound good. They um, they honestly sound a little bit bigger than they are in terms of the driver, which I'm entirely alright with. Uh, they feature. Once again, going over the box, uh, gimbal suspended ear cups, that basically means you don't have to flex anything around when you stick them on your head, they just pretty much shape themselves to fit, you know, they line themselves up, self-adjusting headband, which is also quite nice, a detachable single-sided cable, let me just pop the box down, I'll see if I can put it in view, I can't, you get the corner, you get AKG, too bad. And what is also included is one single sided cable which comes to a 3.5 millimeter. As I bring that up close, it's not really focusing right, but it's threaded. And there is a quarter inch jack adapter for it which screws on. Screws on quite snugly, feels great. Just like basically anything with a screw on quarter inch connector. Really, the attachment point from the cable to the headphones themselves as you can see here it's got a locking pin which if we give that a little squeeze you can see that we'll pull that out and it goes to a is that what's really not great is it? it goes to like a mini xlr sort of balance connection which sits off the side of the headphones although the connector does not go to a full balanced output where you've actually got ground for each of the left and right channels. That's not how it works. Um, features of the headphone, as we'll go over, as we just spoke about, the gimbal rotating mounts. As you can see where I'm holding the headphone, they... Like, it's actually got, like, a little bit of a mount where it rotates around, per se, around the driver, clips to your head. The ear cups are nice and soft. They are quite soft, realistically speaking. Um, one of the points of, I don't know, contention with build quality with me is I'm not a huge fan of the um, ear pads supplied. 
they feel a little bit plasticky to me. They are pleather, so a polyurethane leather. They are, you know, essentially plastic. But they're soft, and that said, while I complain about them feeling a little bit plasticky to me, I have worn these things in the last two weeks, so I drive for a living. I spend a long time on the road, and an average week I'll do 1,500 to 2,000 Ks on the road, and I wear these things. I actually took them with me in the car as part of the road testing. I've been listening to them, plugged into my phone, listening to music. And at no point for having these things on a minimum, every day for the last two weeks, I've had these earphones on my head for at least three or four hours a day, if not longer. A couple of really big sessions, we're talking six hours. And at no point have they been uncomfortable enough for me to want to take them off and say, no, the earpads are too uncomfortable for me, got to get rid of them. So that's pretty good. That speaks a lot for them. Uh, Self-adjusting headband. As we can see here as well, you can actually see the uh, sliding mechanism that sits just above the drivers there moving. We'll get a little bit of a close-up on this. You can see me there as I grip it with my finger behind it. I'm just sort of get it. You can actually see moving there behind. There's a couple little elastic bands which hold that in. Um, there is quite a limited range of movement, so it's well in the tolerances of the elastic bands. But that's another point I'm looking at in term, uh, another point I'm looking at in terms of possible build quality issues leading into the future will that wear out i don't know that said i've had a look around on the internet asking you know what people think about these things general commentary on build quality and that self-adjusting headband is something i've never seen anyone complain about so you know something to look at as well um well we've talked about the aesthetics of these things how they look how they feel comfort wise how much i paid for them um, we should probably actually talk about how they sound like. What do they sound like, not how they sound like. You would talk about how they sound, or what they sound like. You would not talk about how they sound like. That is terrible English. I've written notes. Anyway, build, 8 out of 10, solid, doesn't feel flimsy at all. Points of concern, the elastic tensioners for the headband... No complaints so that I could find, so Tom will tell on that. The ear pads being the pleather polyurethane leather, a bit plasticky for my taste. I'm going to replace them with something else. Um, I've been looking at pads by Brainwaves, Biodynamic in the Velours, as well as ZMF. They do some lovely leather ear pads, real deal leather ear pads. Their version of pleather is a protein leather, not a polyurethane leather which is uh, worth noting as well. I'm unsure what I'm going to go with, but I'm definitely going to get something more comfortable for them. That said, if you're going to be using them for shorter sessions than I have, like I've road tested the shit out of these things in the last week, if you're going to get, or if you're just going to buy them outright, you won't find them uncomfortable, quite honestly, and I'm a little bit fussy about that sort of shit. All of my other headphones have either got velour ear pads or, you know, cloth ear pads that are very comfortable on the skin, and these things still feel fine. So you won't have any issues with them there. Uh, let's talk about the sound before we move on. Uh, I guess I've scratched up a note card on my girlfriend's lovely note to paper that we keep by the phone. Um, they're flat cans. They're very flat. Like These are reference headphones. Um, they're semi-open. They've got a nice wide sound stage. The bass is not overpowering. Um, I would actually call it a little bit light on in terms of flat out head rumbling impact because they're small drivers, 30 millimeter drivers, but it does reach the depths of bass required. You're, you're not actually missing anything out of the spectrum. Um, in terms of testing, like I've got a couple of tracks that I like if I'm going to have a listen to the bass on the headphones, how low does it go, how good does it sound, you know, does it sit well level wise with everything else in the track. Um, a couple of particular tracks, so let's do one called Bullet by an artist named Kill J and... On My Level by Wiz Khalifa, both of which are pretty bass-heavy tracks. Bullet, not so much bass-heavy, but it reaches deep, deep, deep bass. So if your headphones are picking up that, and you're sort of getting that down in the background to the rest of the track, then you're doing pretty well, because that reaches way down there. Uh, on My Level is a real, lots of a uh, layered bass, like it goes up and down, but it's a lot of uh, compression hanging around the sub-bass level there, things that are going on. In terms of treble, they are also not excessively bright either, which is good. They maintain great detail, 
throughout the spectrum. You really miss nothing with these things, but the bass isn't overpowering or excessively rumbly, though it does reach the depths you want it to in terms of what you're listening to. The treble is not excessively bright or peaky, so you're not really going to have um, issues there in terms of like ear fatigue. Uh, the number one track, I really like to test the treble on. Like, um, if you've got some very peaky, sibilant, trebly headphones, and you want to test them out on a treble track, um, Rage Against the Machine, Maria, off the Battle for Los Angeles album. Um, if you've got sibilant or very bright headphones, that song will drill a hole in your head. Dead set. <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. So sound-wise, the headphones are really well balanced. Um, like I said, I've been listening to them non-stop in the car, on the road, at home, with and without background noise. Um, in terms of sound oscillation, they don't give you a lot. Um, yeah, the semi-open headphones, you're going to hear what's going on around you. If you're in a quiet environment, excellent. Um... The isolation they do provide to you, though, is very light on. If you're going to be in a loud place, you're wearing them in public, you're out walking the streets with them, um, you are going to hear the ambience that's going on straight through these things and you're going to pick it up. I don't know, I guess if you like to listen to your music loud on the ambient environment, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always good knowing when a car's about to run you over, if you're crossing a road and you didn't see it coming. Or alternatively, if you're sitting around the house, it's good to hear when your girlfriend is yelling at you and or trying to get your attention for whatever reason. Partners hate being ignored. So, that's good. In terms of sound stage, nice and wide. In terms of sound leakage, like how much sound is coming out as opposed to going in, they're pretty good. Um, if you're sitting quite close to someone and you've really got the volume cranked, they'll be able to hear what's going on but if you're listening at moderate to loud-ish levels and there's like a few meters between you and there may be like a tv on quietly in the room or something along those lines they're not going to hear what's going on in their headphones so they're pretty good in that respect they do being a semi-open set of headphones though they work best in a quiet environment so if you are looking at a set of headphones for music listening either out in public or gaming or something that you want to give yourself some peace and quiet with along with everyone else you may want to look at a closed set that's going to provide you that isolation you need in terms of isolating sound leakage and stopping the outside world from getting in to you so i think that just about wraps it up um on the whole these are excellent headphones i'm really impressed with them they are cheap they look quite nice they present well um, yeah, they're headphones I can wear for long periods of times, they're not fatiguing at all, um, I'm not finding I'm missing anything, like, I'm not wearing these things and saying, I want more bass, where's this, you know, there's not enough treble here, there's not enough bass, where's the impact, the stage is a bit thin, I'm not saying things like that, they're just great all-rounders, um, Obviously won't match the quality of some absurdly expensive headphones, but if you're going to spend less than $100 Australian or, you know, less than $75 US on a set of headphones and you're looking for something open, these should really be considered, they're great. I mean, what you would be looking for is, unless you plan on purchasing these off Mastrop as the M220s are a Mastrop exclusive, You'd want to be looking for AKG K240s, but um, excellent headphones, and pretty happy to have them in my collection, actually. So yeah, one more cursory glance over the headphones in the lovely white styling. I see the overhead wires, the self-tensioning strap. cable attachment point good headphones i recommend taking a look into these if ever you're looking for something these would go quite easily onto my list of headphones i would recommend for people who want to spend say 150 dollars us 
on a set of headphones and a DAC amp just to get sound processing outside their case and a nice sounding pair of headphones to go with it. These would easily make the list for headphone recommendations. Very good. And just by chucking an extra set of pad on them, set of pads on them, you're going to make them comfortable enough to last you forever, basically. All right, I think that's about it for me. Uh, Century Gun signing off. I'll talk to you guys next time. These are the AKG M220s collected off Mass Drop. Thanks very much for watching.